For those of us who see uh, children, pediatric patients, uh, lysosomal acid lipase deficiency is really very important. Uh, about 90% of all the cases that have been diagnosed to date occur in children. So this is primarily a pediatric disease. So the question is, if I'm a primary care doctor, if I'm a family practitioner, or general pediatrician, or maybe pediatric cardiologist, what am I going to look for? How will I know what this is when I see it? I think it boils down to three very simple things. The key to me, and I've, I'm a lipidologist here, but the key to me, first and foremost, is hypercholesterolemia. I want to look for high cholesterol. And in kids, of course, we want to do kind of the age-corrected thing. And, and for a young child, it doesn't have to be that high to be really, really high in terms of percentile. But if we have a significantly elevated total cholesterol or LDL cholesterol, then that's key number one. And we're focusing on this, this familial hypercholesterolemia thing. We're trying to screen the kids for that. We're trying to do cascade screening in the family, the whole thing. That's wonderful. But realize that whenever you see somebody with what looks like familial hypercholesterolemia, off in the corner you need to remember, could this be LAL deficiency masquerading as the typical case of FH? So the first piece, elevated LDL. Second piece, low HDL. Now HDL tends to be just a little bit suppressed in FH, but it tends to be even a little bit lower in the cases that truly have LAL deficiency. So high LDL, low HDL. The third element here is elevated transaminases. The liver is hit very hard by this, and you look primarily with elevated transaminases. Now, if you're good at a physical exam, and the patient will relax for you, and you can get a good liver exam, you're gonna look for hepatomegaly. Virtually everybody with LALD has a big liver. And in some ways, it's a little easier to pick up in kids than it is in adults. But I think the transaminases are actually even a little bit better than hepatomegaly, but look for both. Okay, so you've got those three elements. If you see that, then you say to yourself, this might be that rare disorder, LALD. So then what do you do? You have your choice either to send out to your local clinical lipidologist. There are pediatric lipidologists around the country. Uh, a lot of us that are in adult medicine that are clinical lipidologists will actually see children as part of our practice. So find one of us in your community and, uh, or somebody else in the National Lipid Association or just somebody else knowledgeable about, uh, about lipids primarily, or liver disorders. And then we'll do the screening, but you can do it. There are actually kits available. It's a dried blood spot. Send it off to the lab. It is free of charge. Uh, there's a, a kind pharmaceutical company that is paying for us to do these screens, so it's free. Can't get better than that. And it's completely definitive. There is no overlap whatsoever between normal and LL deficiency. So we know for a fact if they have it, if they do, then we for sure need to refer off and if they don't, then we go on our way. So to me, the most important piece here, this is a rare disease which is way underdiagnosed, way underappreciated. If we miss the diagnosis and it's picked up 10, 15, 20, 30 years later, then all that damage has occurred and the patient is way worse off than if we had thought about it when we had that chance. So as we screen our children for lipids, let's remember the high LDL, the low HDL, and then that transaminase piece that really doesn't belong with the other two if it's a standard uh, FH case or the hepatomegaly and or those two liver pieces don't belong with the other. That tells us refer for screening or screen and then refer if we make the diagnosis.